Inflation, bear market, war. The economy has been in pretty bad shape for quite a while now. But around the start of this year, it appeared to be on its way to recovering. Now the world has placed another UNO reverse card onto the already vulnerable economy. The recent SVB crisis has sent shockwaves throughout the entire banking and tech industry, and in turn, the stability of the US economy. And if it was handled even minutely wrong, would have spelled a crash so bad, it would bring us back to 2008. Silicon Valley was founded in 1983, at the core of innovation and technology here in the US. And for the next decades, SVB would use this gold mine to their advantage, later becoming the 16th largest bank in the country. The bank was doing pretty good for years, capitalizing off the growing tech industry. SVB basically became the bank to go to for many tech companies. I also bet they had a pretty damn good time during the COVID boom market, where many tech stocks and companies were basically going to the moon, which means more money for SVB to hold and invest. SVB got quite secure in their position as one of the largest banks in the world and would try to solidify this by investing in long-term government bonds, which you know at the time seemed like a pretty safe low-risk investment. Too bad they couldn't foresee the future. In the period after the COVID-19 boom market, inflation would run rampant throughout the global economy, especially in the US. And so the big boys had to step in and calm it all down. And the best way the feds know how to bring down inflation is to raise up the interest rate. The thing is though, when you raise up interest rates, the price of bonds fall. And guess who has a bunch of bonds laying around in their portfolio? That's right, SVB's portfolio of bonds would dramatically lose a lot of value throughout this time. A time where many companies in general are just trying to survive. These poor economic conditions provoked many of their clients to withdraw more and more of their money out of the bank. But eventually when SVB ran out of their available capital, they would start selling their bond investments at a wide margin of loss signaling to all their clients and investors out there that SVB may be in quite a pickle. But what really put the final nail in the coffin for the bank was when they announced that they were trying to raise $1.75 billion. This gave one message to clients. The bank was short on capital. And just like that, their clients would start withdrawing their money like crazy from the bank, forcing regulators to shut the whole thing down on March 10th, 2023. In a matter of two days, one of the largest banks in America would collapse. And if this wasn't contained correctly, it would spread throughout the entire banking industry and economy, causing another economic downturn on top of the one we were already in. But this time around, regulators have learned from the past and acted fast to restore consumer confidence in the banking sector. Because if people were worried about the security of their money in banks, it would create pandemonium in the economy as people around the country would start withdrawing all their money at once, causing a national bank run. Because at the end of the day, banks run on the game of confidence. In response to SVB going flat, the government would announce all the deposits owed to SVB's clients would all be restored. Even the ones not insured by the FDIC, which is only $250,000. For a normal person with one account in a bank, that's, you know, that's pretty good. For a large company, tech company, that's... That's some bullshit! To further calm down the banking industry... Daddy, chill. What? The bank term funding program would be enacted and would last for a year. In this one year, the Federal Reserve will be allowed to offer loans to help financial institutions meet deposits without needing to sell their security investments. These actions taken by the regulators was able to so far contain and stabilize this bank crash from reaching the rest of the industry. Well, other than a couple banks like uh, Signature Bank, who would become the third largest bank failure in US history. To stabilize consumer confidence in banks, it really is a team sport. Like how days later, 11 large US banks would help First Republic Bank by injecting $30 billion into the bank to meet their deposits. Which was able to, you know, help the bank out a little bit. Although its stock is still down 70% since the start of March, the bank's rating is also in the shitter as well, so it's probably going to need a lot more help. Now with all this talk of billions of dollars being spent and used to recover all these banks, you must be wondering where the hell all this money is coming from. Well, don't fear too much, as most of the money will be paid through the FDIC, who gets money from premiums paid by the insured banks. But if banks are made to pay higher premiums by the FDIC, then don't be surprised if there are higher interest rates on your loans. In 2023, it's good to see that our government have learned a lot from previous economic downturns and has developed fast countermeasures towards preventing worst case scenarios from occurring. But we're not in the clear yet. Our economy is still in a quite vulnerable state, with it still being affected by inflation and the Federal Reserve's promise to continue to increase interest rates for the foreseeable future. This could be the last economic trial we face before the ultimate recovery of our economy, or it could just be a sign for a much darker flaw in our system. All I do know is that the human will is very resilient, and no matter how bad things get, we have always survived and came out of it stronger than ever.